Hey everybody, Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com, YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And today I'm going to show you a little bit about a technique called liquid liquid extraction. In fact, I'm going to give you a very basic introduction to the principles behind it. Now, this device right here is known as a separatory pump. And it contains a pear-shaped body with a Teflon stopcock, which I can use to drain liquids through the bottom, taking them out of the funnel. And of course, there's a port here on top through which I can add liquid. Now, right now, my separatory funnel contains only deionized water. Now, I've also got a solution here. This is a solution of some blue food dye molecules in N-butanol. Now, N-butanol is an aliphatic alcohol which is immiscible with water. That means that they don't mix together intimately when I put the two in the same space. So if I were to put this N-butanol solution into this separatory funnel full of water, the two are not going to mix well. And in fact, to demonstrate this phenomenon called partitioning on which we rely during this technique, I'm going to do something you wouldn't do in a normal liquid-liquid extraction. And that is, I'm going to add this solution very, very carefully, layering it on top of the deionized water in the separatory form. And as soon as I get that done, I'll be right back to show you how liquid-liquid extraction works. Okay, and we're back. So I've got just a little tiny bit of that butanol solution layered on top using a transfer pipette. And now I'm going to add the rest very, very carefully so that it doesn't disturb the water layer. And because N-butanol has a density of about 0.8, or about 80% that of water, if I add it very carefully, I should be able to get that butanol to just layer on top very nicely. Now again, you wouldn't do this during a normal liquid-liquid extraction experiment because ultimately, as you're about to see, our goal is to mix the two thoroughly. But for now, I'm just going to layer it on there gently so you can see that the two solvents are definitely immiscible and create two different phases. A little bit of a mess there, but not too bad. Okay, so here it is. Before the actual extraction procedure has taken place, you can see I've got my blue dye and my imbutanol and my pure deionized water beneath. Now, the dye molecules really don't want to be here in the N-butanol. They really want to be down here in the deionized water. They're more soluble in that solvent. But right now, I haven't given them a way to get there yet, because they only have this thin little interface between the two across which they can move. So I'm going to give them a little bit of help by agitating this mixture, creating many, many small inclusions of one solvent in the other, and thereby creating a massive amount of surface area through which these blue dye molecules can move, essentially giving them the choice of which solvent they want to be in. So let me do that now. Just a nice, gentle agitation. And if I wait for a few moments, the two immiscible solvents separate from one another again. But we should notice something has happened. If we look a little bit closer, you can see that those blue dye molecules are beginning to migrate into the aqueous solution. And if I give myself enough time and agitation, I can get not, not only some, but almost all of these dye molecules to move over. All right, let's let it isolate itself one more time here. You see that now we've actually got a darker solution forming underneath than we do on top. And this is our evidence that these blue food dye molecules would rather be in the aqueous layer because they're simply more soluble there. Now this is where the stem on the bottom and the stopcock on the bottom of my separatory funnel come into play. If it were my goal to remove my N-butanol from my, uh, excuse me, my dye molecules from my N-butanol solution, I could simply open the stopcock and drain the aqueous layer out of the bottom. Here we go, the separation is starting to really take effect now. You can see that N-butanol layer is very, very light in color, and the aqueous layer is much, much darker. So I have successfully extracted the dye molecules from the N-butanol solution into an aqueous solution, which I can simply collect by opening the stopcock and draining only the aqueous portion of my mixture. So this is the principle on which liquid-liquid extraction takes place. Compounds partition themselves between two immiscible solvents based upon their relative solubilities. And we can use this trick to separate not only molecules from one solution and move them into another, but different molecules and solution from one another if they have different solubility properties. That's how it works, folks. I'm Professor Davis from ChemSurvival.com, YouTube channel ChemSurvival. We'll see you next time.